everybody, I'm Debbie Montgomery Johnson, the founder of the nonprofit The Woman Behind the Smile, and your host of Stand Up and Speak Up, a show that is about each and every one of us. Many of us have something, something we're hiding, something we're ashamed of, something that through no fault of our own or through our own making we keep hidden, and that in turn keeps us hidden from each other and the world. Good people go through terrible situations. Wise people know when and how to let it go. Everything that happens to us helps us grow, and while it may be hard to see it right away, the most important thing to do is to change your perception about your circumstances. Regardless of what your personal experiences or traumas have been, this showcase series is designed to ignite the light in you, as well as providing safe harbor, education, personal growth, and resources so that no matter where you are in your journey, you'll have the courage to move on when you're ready. Stand Up and Speak Up features ordinary people who've been through extraordinary situations and struggles and found the courage to step out from behind their smiles and speak up about their experiences and the lessons gleaned from those experiences. Everybody heals at a different pace, and we recognize that. So come on in, have a listen, and enjoy the ride at your own speed. Hey, everybody, it's a beautiful day in South Florida. I love to say it's a beautiful day in paradise, and today it actually is. We've had a lot of rain, but today right now it's gorgeous. And I am so excited because today is an international guest, an international business day, and we've got Canada here on several levels. My guest and my um, my listeners are here from Canada, and I always love to say, stay warm up there, you guys, because I know it gets cold, but now I understand that it's cold and hot, cold and hot, so everybody's getting sick. So I am so excited. My guest today is a young entrepreneur that I met actually through her father. I was invited to be on her podcast, and we're going to talk a lot about that today. She just amazed me that it, we don't celebrate our youth as well, the good youth as well as we should. We don't hear about the good things. And today, although my guest is not a woman behind the smile, she actually has a nonprofit that works with people that hide behind their smile sometimes. And so we're going to go that way. But let me introduce to you my special guest, Ms. Avni Godsey. Avni, are you there? Hi, everybody. Avni, thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to present you to my audience because I think you're just one amazing young woman. Now, you are 14 years old. Because I've done my research, I've been looking at your YouTube videos, I've been, I've been doing some research on you, and, and I, you started when you were about 12, is that right? Yeah, I think I was just turned 12. Just turned 12? Most 12-year-olds are not looking to start nonprofits and to do something for other people. And that, in it, that alone, I'm very proud of what you do, and that you stood Thank up you. like that. So let's just jump right into this, because usually I ask my guests who are much older than you, how they grew up, where they grew up, you know, their family situation. Now, this is, I'm usually talking to them about them being your age. So just briefly, tell me where you're from and what's your family situation. Do you have brothers and sisters? I think I heard you had a sister. So give me a, a little idea of where you are right now. Yeah, so I live in London, Ontario in Canada, and I have a younger sister who's turning 10 this year. And, yeah, my family is really supportive, and I'm very thankful for them. Well, that's great. And we're going to just jump right into what you do because part of the show, I'm going to get you to talk about what I do, but this is about you right now. So why did you start Heartification, and how did you come up with that name? Yeah, so the whole inspiration behind Heartification is when I went to India in 2018. Um, and my grandpa had shown me these postcards, and on the postcards were paintings done by people that had no arms. So they painted with their mouths and their feet instead, and the paintings were amazing. And I started thinking, you wouldn't think that someone with no arms could paint such a beautiful masterpiece because you would usually paint using your hands, but they wouldn't be able to do that. So they found another way to express themselves and continue to do what they love, which was painting. So I got inspired to help those with disabilities and illnesses express themselves and make them feel special so they know that they can do anything. That's extraordinary. So what actually took you to India? Do you have family in India? Yeah, most of my family is in India. Which part? 
Uh, several parts. My grandparents are from Pune. I have family in Mumbai. Well, that's exciting to me. My, uh, my fellow that works my computers and my, uh, my IT director is actually from Mumbai. And he's like part of my family. So I'm definitely going to send our, our message over to him. Um, I was actually in India a year and a half ago. I went over to speak at a women's economic forum. And I was totally amazed at how wonderful especially the women were, and how well-educated and well-spoken. And for me, though, it was sensory overload, if you know what that means. There were just so many colors and smells, and just it was an amazing experience for me. So Yeah, I what, love going there. Did that inspire you? What inspires you from, from that culture uh, in, your, in your paintings? Well, I think my paintings, I like doing like bright colors and I don't really like painting with dark colors and making it kind of seem gloomy. So I like to paint bright colors and I guess maybe that some of that inspiration comes from India because India, when you think of it, is so bright and so colorful. I definitely think of that. I had a friend who, I have a friend who's a designer over there and the dresses that, I walked into her dress shop and it looked like the rainbow. It was beautiful, yeah. just beautiful and just so vibrant. And you say you said something about not wanting to use dark colors. So how do the light colors and the bright colors make you feel? I, I think it makes me feel like happy. Like when I want, I want someone to look at my painting and feel happy. I want them to to like lift their spirits instead of them kind of picking up that gloomy kind of emotion. I want them to feel vibrant and, you know, happy. So this brings to mind, you said initially that you started the, the, the uh, fortification because you're a grandpa. And I did see, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry that your grandpa passing away this year. I saw a really lovely uh, tribute that you put on online for him. Um, oh, how, is, how is your grandpa an influence in your life? Um, well, my grandpa, he was, he was amazing. Um, he always supported me in heartification and he was always so supportive he was so nice and he was just like an amazing human being he was he had like all the good quality traits I really looked up to him and he had this amazing quote he always used to say which was I can and I will and I got really inspired by that quote whenever I was having a difficult time like on a test or there was some obstacle I always used to think of that quote I can and I will and I used to just push through it so he was That's amazing a, inspiration. I can and I will. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's such a positive quote. And so I heard you talking about um, the reason you were you were looking to do art with disabled folks that are, have disabilities and illnesses. What was it about them that inspired you to set up whole nonprofit for them? So if you were if you were to look at someone with a disability or an illness, you wouldn't think that they would be able to do a specific thing. Like, for example, if someone had no arms, you wouldn't think that they could paint. But those postcards had paintings on on it that were painted by people with no arms. So they could do that. And people with disabilities and illnesses might feel that they can't because of society telling them that they can't when they can. So I created Heartification to let them know that they are special and that they can do what they love, even if they have a disability or an illness. Which is terrific. And, and there are also people that have, that have disabilities that we can't see and exactly, yeah. don't recognize, but the folks that do, how do they feel when they, I know you do some uh, what you call pop-up events. Can you explain the, what your pop-up event is? Yeah, so my pop-up event is basically where I invite um, maybe different organizations um, that help people with disabilities and illnesses or people that we know, and they just come and they just paint and express themselves, and we supply all the paints, the canvases, the brushes, all of that, and they just come and they paint and express themselves through art and let out all the emotions that they're feeling. So tell me what those emotions are. How do you feel when you're around the folks doing that? So at my pop-up event, um, I felt really happy, and I think everyone 
at that event felt really happy because they were there and they were able to express themselves. And I could see by the paintings, they were all pretty bright colors and, you know, really vibrant colors. So I was picking up on that, that they were happy to be here, and that made me happy as well. Now, some of the folks that you invite, they're not professional artists. They're just people that want to paint and have painted or haven't. What's their artistic level, if you can put it that way? Yeah, they, they don't have to be professional at all. They can. There was this one um, man named Carl, and he hadn't painted since high school. And he had Parkinson's disease, and I'm standing right next to him, and he was telling me, watch what I'm about to do. And so his left hand was shaking, and he put his, he was holding the brush in his right hand, and as he put the brush onto the canvas, his left arm stopped shaking, and he looked at me, and he was like, this is what your event is doing for me, and I want to thank you for doing this event and putting this on and helping those with disabilities and illnesses. And that made me feel so happy, and he hadn't painted since high school. So the artistic level, I guess, is it doesn't really matter. It's just You just come there, and you express yourself through art. As you were saying that about that gentleman, all I want to do is give you a hug. And give him a hug. <laughs> like, what a marvelous feeling, because that's a safe space for many people. Yeah. That perhaps they, you know, I, my, my, uh, my, well, my show is called Stand Up and Speak Up, but my, my, my nonprofit is called The Woman Behind the Smile. And I'm thinking of a lot of people that have had something happen in their life. It could be a physical disability or a mental disability where they just want to hide. They want to hide behind that smile and hide from the world. So with this past year and, and being homebound in the pandemic and stuff, how has this affected your mission? So because of COVID and... Um, not us being able to, you know, really go and socialize. We can't do our pop-up events, but um, I've, I'm still selling some of my paintings and raising money for when COVID is over, then I can have my pop-up event. And I also started a podcast series where I interview people um, and get to know how art has affected their life and how art plays a role in their life as well. Oh, and it, it is a fun podcast. Thank you for having me as your guest. And I just got a message that our, our uh, podcast will air tomorrow at about 11. And we'll put it out there. So, Avni, I'm going to flip the, turn the tide on you. What is your definition of art? Okay, so my definition is any way you're able to express yourself and let out your emotions. And that can be anything and everything. And when I was little, I used to think art was just painting, dance, singing, all the basics. But if you actually think about it and use the definition of any way you're able to express yourself, art is everywhere. Like the chair you're sitting on, someone had to design that, and they express themselves through the design. So that's an art. And everything around you, you know, the building you're in, the little decorations around you, they're all art. So art is all around us and my definition is any way you're able to express yourself and let out your emotions. Well, and I love that because I remember when you and I were talking, when, when I initially heard about art or think about art, I'm thinking, okay, Deb, you can't, you can't draw. You do stick figures. And then I started going, well, that's not my art. My art, I love beautiful art, but my art is music. It's the piano. It may be writing. It's language arts. It's not necessarily you know, a visual art. And that's what I love about what you do is you – and I've listened to many of your podcasts, you have terrific guests. How do you pick out, how do you pick your guests? Who do you pick from? So most of my guests come from my dad's contacts, so who's, who he's interviewed for his podcast. And we pick out the ones that may have an artistic kind of role in their life and then people that are inspiring. And then they, I have them on my podcast show. Well, it was it was quite an honor when I when I got your email asking me to be a guest on the show. I'm thinking, yes, this is so much fun because I really enjoyed your dad's podcast. Do you want to just give a plug for your pop's podcast? What's that all about? What is your dad's podcast? We're going to give him credit for putting us together. Yeah, so my dad's podcast is about intuition, and he interviews people about intuition and how they use their intuition in different situations. And he talks about intuition and he helps people tap into their intuitive side and 
help them strengthen their intuition so that when they face a difficult situation, they can use that intuition to move forward. There you go. And, and how can people listen to his podcast? His podcast is um, on any podcast channel, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. So if you just search up Intuitionology, it should come up. There you go, Intuitionology. Well, back to, to Avni. What is your website? My website um, is heartification.com. And on there I have all of my paintings, my biography. I put all of my podcasts up there as well um, and you can also subscribe to like a weekly podcast email so every time my podcast comes out on my website you'll get an email notifying you and then there's a link where you can just click in and go straight to the podcast. Okay now normally I don't have people go to other websites while we're on the, on the call but I want folks to go to Heartification that's H-E-A-R-T I-F-I-C-A-T-I-O-N, heartification.com. And while we're on the show, take a look at her paintings. They are stunning. They are so much fun. I'm, I'm looking at the picture of you um, standing beside the blue jay, or the bluebird. I call it the blue jay. And it, the, the blues are just so vibrant, and they match your, match your dress, which is really darling. But Adney's paintings, um, some originals and many of the prints are available for sale on her website. And then what do you do with the money that you get from the sale of your paintings? So all of the money, 100% of it, goes to hosting those pop-up events. So buying you know, the brushes, the canvases, um, the place where we're hosting it. Um, so all of the money goes towards the pop-up event. And I, didn't, I can't remember if you, I'm having a senior moment. Did you say that you're going to be planning another one? You're just waiting for Canada to open up before you can do it. Yeah, we're, we haven't like started planning yet, but after COVID's done and all the restrictions are lifted, we're definitely going to do another pop-up event. Have you been able to do anything online, a sort of a virtual event? I've started my podcast, so that keeps me busy. That keeps you extraordinarily busy. Now, your podcast, you're the host, you're the editor, you're the publisher. Is that correct? And what got you to get into a podcast? So, honestly, at first I didn't want to start a podcast. I thought it was too much work and I didn't know, you know, how to edit it, how to upload it. It just felt like so much work. And my dad, he taught me everything, every little detail so I can do it on my own. And, of course, he helps me now uh, every now and then. But I learned it all from my dad and... He's amazing. We need, we need dads like yours. We need more dads like yours. Thank you for your dad. Do you do your social media stuff, your posting and stuff too? I, I find that takes a lot of time. And uh, I may not be doing it as best I could. So how do you get your stuff out onto social media? So yeah, sometimes I post like things, oh, I'm working on this or this just uploaded. And I also post like artistic quotes. Um, and sometimes my dad will help me with those as well. Um, but yeah, I like to you know post artistic quotes that are inspiring and quotes from different artists. Um, and I also like to post videos or images of behind the scenes, like me uploading my podcast or me working on a painting or something like that. Well, they're just extraordinary. So everybody, go to heartification.com and take a look at our paintings. You can always donate to the cause. It's a it's a fabulous cause, and we really hope that things open up so you can have some some in person events again too. Oh, gosh, this is such a neat thing, what you're doing. And I, I'm, again, I'm looking at your pictures. I want everybody to go and take a look at the pictures. What is your favorite painting? I honestly don't know. I really like Winter Magic. It's like the snowy one. Um, mm -hmm. If you guys are on my website, you can see that one. Um, I really like the, like the purples and that one and the different colors. But each one has like a different color scheme. So I don't know if I can choose like one particular one. That's interesting because I, I put Winter Magic up on one of our promotions because I, I grew up in Vermont, but I live in South Florida right now, and I, I don't think I could live in the snow again, but that's just the, those purple, the purple in the water is just very soothing, whereas look, I'm looking at a Fiery Sea. What, what inspired Fiery Sea? That's a really vibrant one. Yeah, I think I, want, I wanted to do like a beach painting, and then once I like done the water, I wanted the sky to pop out and it to like contrast so the blues and the teals are kind of like calm colors 
so I wanted the sky to be really vibrant. So I used all like the fiery kind of colors, the reds, the oranges, the yellows. Well, it's really beautiful. And contrast that to the one, the sunset one. Uh, my oldest son and his wife live in Hawaii now, and I was looking at sunset going, oh, wow, that's where the kids are. And I'm down in Florida, but that looks more like Hawaii. <laughs> so where's the inspiration for that one? Um, I think with that one, I kind of just wanted to do like a nice sunset. Okay. And the sky is, is pretty like, you know, different. And I like the kind of shadow with the rocks and the trees that are just black. And then the sky kind of really pops out as well as the water. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And there's a, one more that I really liked, and that was the one with the red bloom. Is that a special flower that you like, or wh where'd that come from? I don't remember my inspiration for that one, but I remember me wanting to paint a flower because I don't think I've ever really painted just a flower. I mostly painted like landscapes with flowers in it, and then I wanted to do the black background, so it pops out. It, it's beautiful, and I'm you know looking at the the website again, everybody. Heartification.com. You go to the shop and see all of our paintings. Here. We're seeing from winter to fall to some of the the landscapes look like um, for me it's like a little European village. Uh, and then your one bird. <laughs> what got you to paint the blue bird? Um, I painted that one when I was actually, when I was smaller, like before heartification. I painted that. I don't know how old I was. Um, and that one is actually in like oil pastels. And at my old art class, these kind of have themes. So the theme for like that week was a bird. So I just chose a blue jay. So I don't know if there was really any inspiration behind it. It was just kind of what I had to do. But it's really be I really like how it turned out. And it's kind of amazing because I was so young at that time. I can't, <laughs> I can't really. I, knew, I was like, how did I do that? <laughs> it is wonderful. Uh, have you always loved art? Yeah, my parents put me in art classes when I was like four. And there I developed the talent, and they noticed that I had a, a talent. And, you know, I always love art and how you're able to do so many different things, and there's so many different mediums. So then after I started certification, or like a, I think a few months before that, I went from this, like, group art class to kind of a one-on-one -on -one art session with a professional artist. Well, it's, it's terrific. Now, there's one other thing on the website I'm looking at. It's called the Heartification Care Package. What is that? So we, we created the care packages during COVID, and it's basically a package that has canvas, um, some paints, um, brushes, and you can buy it for yourself or for a family member, and they, they just get sent these materials and they're able to paint. So if you know someone that's going through a hard time or if you are going through a hard time and you just need something to let out your emotions, you can buy a care package and all the materials come to you and then you just paint. That's a really great idea. Uh, I was talking with Dr. McGinnis about you know, some of our, our folks that we work with um, just are so, are so traumatized by what has happened to them that they basically disengage from life. And I say, maybe they need a new hobby. Maybe they, you know, I think sometimes we need to make ourselves uncomfortable, comfortable being uncomfortable. And for me, painting would be, make me uncomfortable. <laughs> but, but the idea of it, of just creating something new, uh, can really get your mind going. So that's a marvelous idea. Have you, have you had good success with that? Um, I don't think we've sold any care packages yet, and they're fairly new. But I'm going to start you know, promoting it more, and that way people know about it. And whenever they're feeling down, they remember, oh, yeah, the Heartification Care Package, and then they, they go and they buy it. Well, we're going we're gonna to promote that one because I'm just thinking, I just had a thought. I've got grandchildren that... Many of the times in schools now, art is either pulled out because of expenses or whatever, they're not getting it. And many times they've been you know, at home a lot and they don't have things to do. This would be a great 
care package to send to grandchildren, anybody who's listening that has grandchildren or young children, what a fun thing to get in the mail. There you go. Not just for folks that have, you know, are, are down and out. It's for the kids that you want them to have an extra project. So there you go. I just said, hey, that's what I'm doing when I get off the show today. This, my kids are getting getting a care package. And thank you, awesome. Leah. Thank you. I just got a message from your pop that uh, there's been a, a donation to your to your cause today from our organization. So thank you, everybody, for list, who's listening. Uh, this is really great. I think we really need to promote our youth in the good things they're doing. And Avni, to start a nonprofit, I know your your folks have been a big help to you. But what was what got you to do the, to do the nonprofit versus just you know a, a, I don't know just a little art show? What is it that got you to actually get into the business of the art? I think it was. I think I was inspired by my dad because he had his own business and I really like admired how much work he put into and how he was actually affecting people. And I wanted to have, I didn't want to just have one pop event and then that's the end. I wanted it to be continuous and I wanted to make people aware that this, that those with disabilities and illnesses can do what they want. And I just thought of selling my art and then all of that money goes towards hosting the pop events and it's like a cycle. So where do you see this in the next five years? Um, I, I hope to see it still running and just having many pump events, many fundraisers, um, and my podcast being, you know, bigger and reaching more people. Have you ever thought of showcasing the other folks' art? For the people with disabilities and illnesses, their art, what we actually did was they got their painting so that when when they painted, they left it with us. They left their canvas and their beautiful painting with us. And what we did was we printed the image of their painting on shirt that had the Heartification logo. And then for um, those in London, because everyone who came to that pop event was in London, we actually hand-delivered the, their painting, and then they got this shirt with their painting and the Heartification logo on it, like a little memory. That is terrific. What a, what a grand idea. And now they can, that's great advertising for you too, because now they can go out there with those shirts on and say, first off, look what I did. And how empowering is that? And then to say, and this is how I did it. And, oh, that's, I have goosebumps on that one. And that, that's really terrific. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, part of me is just so speechless about what you're doing. I'm thinking about, gosh, when I was 14 years old, I was not thinking about, I was into sports. I was not thinking about a nonprofit. And uh, even though we did a lot of service for folks, and, and that's where this is a key. And I think this is a tribute to your parents and your grandfather to make you aware of serving others in a way that has nothing to do with you. It's all about giving of you, of your heart, uh, to others and thank you so much for doing that and I think we talked about the heartification and, and the name but I'm looking at your your logo and the art in the middle of heart but it all comes down to heart and even though you're expressing yeah. yourself through art it's your heart and you're small in stature but big in heart and and I want to thank you for for that and uh, I, I want people to share her artwork, share heartification, share, you know, the message here. I think there are so many folks out there that are disabled physically, but just the imaginations. I mean, I was I was looking at uh, the photos of the postcards and of when you went to India. Just the acknowledgement that folks can do something makes them smile. And I mean, you do that. Just I mean, your presence makes me smile. Just looking at your picture makes me smile. And I want folks to to uh, to really internalize that feeling you get from her artwork and from the cause that she has. And remember how this would make you feel if you were in a position of uh, having a disability and people kept telling you you can't, you can't, you can't. And I love what you said at the very very beginning about what your grandpa said. He goes. I can and I will. 
there's great strength in that, Avni. I can and I will. Thank you so much for being my guest today. Avni is a young woman who is standing up and speaking up for a cause, for a purpose, for her heart. And I am thrilled to have had her as my youngest guest, uh, but one of the wisest. So thank you so much, honey, for being here. I appreciate it. Stand Up and Speak Up is dedicated to encouraging you to remove the mask of embarrassment and to being your best self. The episode has been sponsored by BenfoComplete.com, a vitamin supplement company that supports happy and healthy hands and feet for those with neuropathy. If you or anyone you know struggles with the pins and needles or numbness in their hands and feet, check out our Benfoteaming products at BenfoComplete.com and use the special code Stand up for a 5% discount on your purchase. Again, folks, thanks so much for being here today. I didn't mention, but I want to, that my new book, The Gift Called Fearless, A Gift Called Fearless, is coming out on July 22nd. It'll be available on Amazon. We'll put that out on the promotion, too. That is one huh, kick-butt book. It's really fun, and I want you to go check that out. Go to my website, thewomanbehindthesmile.com, for additional information and resources. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and enjoy the replays. Check out heartification.com and Adney's social media. Support her any way you can, folks. And thanks so much for being with us. Have a great day today.